Hey guys, Happy New Year. I hope everybody's doing well and getting ready to have a good New Year's Eve. Uh, I know it's probably a little uh, less eventful than normal New Year's Eves, but hopefully we are putting this 2020 craziness behind us and next year we'll be back to, to doing awesome things uh, on New Year's Eve and playing fun gigs and all the other kind of things. So anyways, um, I thought I would take today and make a video about my Supro Royal Reverb um, that actually was given to me by Supro after a, a fire where the band I was playing with, uh, RV and trailer, burned to the ground on the side of the highway. Uh, I talked a little bit about it in the video that I made about my custom shop Strat. You guys said you'd like to hear the rest of the story. Uh, and today happens to be three years from the day it happened. So in 2017, I was playing with a band called Riverbend Reunion. We were at Martin's in uh, Jackson, Mississippi, which is a super cool place. It's a great venue if you've never been there. I'm assuming it's still there. It probably is. I'll put up some pictures right now, and I'm probably even going to put up a little clip of us playing that night so you can hear the amp. This was, it actually wasn't this amp. It was my first Royal Reverb that I played that night, and that's what I was touring with with these guys. Um, so I'll stick that in right here. <laughs> playing with Riverbend Reunion was I, I had moved back to North Carolina from Nashville. Uh, that's its own story. So maybe we'll, we'll tell that story how I ended up back in North Carolina or why I left Nashville on a later video. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to hear, hear about that. And I know you guys want to hear about how and why I landed at Casino. That's actually tied up with this amp too. So um, maybe we'll tie those into some future videos. But anyways, uh, John from Riverbend Reunion had messaged me on Facebook and said, hey, you know, I like your plan. We're a jam band, sort of Southern rock kind of thing. Uh, and they were. They were an awesome sort of Almond Brothers-ish, kind of Grateful Dead-ish, just, just a cool sort of Southern rocky kind of jam band. I love playing with them. They were a fantastic band. I didn't play with them for too awful long, but, man, I really enjoyed all the times that I did, except for maybe the fire. But even that turned out to be be a pretty wild experience and, and a great experience, the way people were, were kind to us. But anyways... He had messaged me, um, said, hey, do you want to you want to play with us? Uh, on my Facebook post at that time, it still said Nashville. I had not even changed it back to North Carolina. Um, so I said, hey, I would love to play with you guys, but I'm in North Carolina now, not Nashville. Are you traveling? Does it matter? You know, is that is that a deal breaker? They said no. I met them for the first gig. I played with them in Asheville. Uh, it was snowing that night. I met them. The snow had made it you know, take forever for me to get to Asheville from, from, uh, Hamlet where I was living. Um, and <laughs> by the time I got there, it was literally time to get on stage and play. So got there, threw my stuff on stage. We played our first show and the rest was sort of history. Um, but I mean, you know, it was jam band blues based stuff. So, so no big deal there. Um, but anyways, uh, the whole time for the whole first shows, this is the amp or, or this type of amp is what I was playing. So as Supro, uh, 210 combo amp. Uh, I always run it at the 35 watt setting. This particular one has a 35 watt and a 60 watt setting. The one I had back then uh, had 35, 45, or 60. They've changed it a little bit since then. This one actually has a few more surprises that Supro did for me, especially at the factory. I believe there are only two built with these specifications from Supro. So we'll talk about those in a minute. So, anyways, I'm playing. I'm playing with Riverbend Reunion. Um, 
we're doing lots of cool shows. We're traveling a ton. Um, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. Um, before that, I'd done a ton of country stuff. So getting back to sort of Southern rock jam band kind of, kind of things was really making my heart happy. Um, and then three years ago today is the day that we actually were on the road on the way home on New Year's Eve when the RV caught on fire and we lost all of the junk. So we were playing at a place called Martin's in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, super cool venue, great stage. Um, they have a great little like band room built into the venue in the back. It's like a nice hotel in the back of the bar. So cool, um, which if you know much about touring bands at that level, that is few and far between <laughs> when you have a band house that's like super nice. So we enjoyed that. We played the show. We had gone out there and played. Uh, there were four of us in the band, by the way. So two guitar players, um, a bass player who was phenomenal and had the, the thing on the floor that he could run with his feet, almost like organ pedals, where he could do like all these cool sub frequencies. Fantastic drummer. Um, and like I said, we traveled most of the time in an RV pulling a trailer. So this was no different. And Pam, John's wife, uh, had come out with us to do video um, for promotional stuff uh, because Martin's was such a cool video, or a cool video, a cool venue. So we were trying to get video and pictures and that kind of stuff there um, as we were going into the sort of the new year to, to promote ourselves more. Um, yeah. So we go out there, we play. In fact, I think that was probably the only reason we took the gig because it was a random one-off and it was way out in Mississippi. But we did it for that reason. Um, anyways, so we're, we play the show. We hang out. We sleep there. We get up the next day, which which was, again, three years ago today. So the last day of 2017. Um, we're on the way home. Uh, John's driving. His wife is in the front seat passenger side. I'm right behind him on like the little couch in the RV. And then the other two guys were sort of in, in uh, asleep, like in our little makeshift bedroom in the RV. Um, and all of a sudden I hear... Pam say, that's John's wife, we're on fire. And I look over out the passenger window and there are flames just like straight up looking up the side of the window on the RV, like legit flames. We're on fire, on fire. So uh, we pull off to the side of the road. Um, I go back and yell at the guys to get off. L luckily, uh, our guitars were in the, the actual RV. Everything else was in a trailer. So we grab some guitars and things. Those guys run out of the back. As soon as we get out, the whole thing is engulfed in flames. I'll put up some pictures as we go. But the whole RV is already engulfed in flames. We open the little sort of cargo bays on the front underneath where, where Pam was sitting. And it is just whatever caught on fire in there is totally going. There were roadside flares under there. They've caught on fire. We think maybe that's what caused it. We don't know. Probably will never know. But, man, there was no getting it out. Yeah, we kind of tried to put it out. We just ended up setting the side of the road on fire, too. So even some of the stuff we salvaged out of the RV burn up on the side of the road. And the whole woods caught on fire. I mean, you know, it's freezing. You know, we're on, on the interstate. We're six hours from Nashville. Um, it's it's the We're just watching our whole everything go up in flames. I remember John tried to open the front door of the RV after we jumped out. And it, was, it just scorched the whole side of his beard. He had a big red sort of beard. Burned off the whole front side of his beard. Um, took the fire department forever to get there because just because we were out in the middle of nowhere. They were actually great. And then when they got there, they had to spend the first bit making sure the woods, you know, were were not spreading. Um, so they were putting that stuff out. They're coming. They spray all our stuff down. We couldn't get back in the RV at all. Um, like I said, it was just once we got out and jumped out, it was just engulfed. The keys to open the trailer were in there and the trailer was locked on to the RV. Those keys were also in there. So we were basically just sitting there watching everything slowly move towards our trailer, our equipment and it all, it all burned, man. Um, there was nothing even vaguely recognizable of our equipment. So all of our PA stuff, everybody's amps, all the drummers gear, all the bass players rig, um, yeah, we were in pretty bad shape. We had a winter tour starting 10 days after that. So we were basically stranded on the side of the road. Uh, the fire department took us to a truck stop, uh, left us there. And then I believe our drummer, it was our drummer's family who came from Nashville to pick us all up. So six hours they had to drive 
to get us. So we hung out at this truck stop. Um, and we're all trying to figure out, you know, what the heck we're going to do. Then six hours back to Nashville. And then I spent New Year's Day actually driving back to North Carolina thinking, man, this is what a rough start <laughs> to this year. What is this year going to be like? Um, but everybody pulled together, um, got us going. We got our, our equipment pretty much back. Insurance was no help. Uh, I learned a ton about insurance through that whole mess. Um, we had the wrong type of insurance for, you know, going out and actually playing music and making money. So there was basically a loophole for the insurance company because they said we were using our gear in, in a commercial way. They didn't have to pay for any of the contents of the trailer. So they gave us a little bit of cash for the RV, gave us a little bit of cash for the actual trailer, no cash for our thirty, forty thousand dollars or so of, of actual equipment that was in there is what I think we figured up. Um, but, you know, a lot of our friends pulled together and we did benefits and fundraisers, um, all kinds of things. Um, pedal companies helped me out. Petty John Electronics was fantastic. Sweetwater, uh, my rep there, Nick Tamez, let me basically place an order for cost, which was super kind of them. Obviously, Casino and Baxter helped me out. Um, right before I had gone on that run, I had been saving up. All right, so I had the, the one Royal Reverb. And I had bought a new Supro, a Statesman, which was a new amp, a fairly new model for them at the time. Um, and I almost took them both on that that show. And I'm so glad I didn't. God, that would have been a mess if I had taken that amp and, and lost it. But basically, I had to get a pedal board back together. So I did that. Um, I sold some some things. I sold a guitar and, and did some... some um, you know, finagling, did some, did some random things. That was around the time that I bought the Strat, like I said in the Strat video, that sort of facilitated it. But, you know, there were GoFundMes and all kinds of stuff. But anyways, so we go back out on the road. Um, we're playing and actually, you know, doing doing fundraisers. I'm, I, my idea was to actually buy another uh, Roar Reverb anyways. So, I, you know, I wanted to do that. I really loved that amp. Um, we Like I said, we played all kinds of cool benefits. We played a cool benefit at... Um, I think it's called 1904 in Jacksonville, Florida, with some good friends of ours. I'll put up a clip of that, too, because that was really fun. I think that's me playing with the actual Supero Statesman. Um, I'll stick that in here. <laughs> jamming there but anyways time starts to go by um the band sort of slows down a, a bit um i'm still sort of playing with them they wanted to stay on the road a ton uh i had two small kids at home i was working at the guitar store obviously I was doing more at casino um if we had been making a little bit more money i probably could have done it more but anyways everything everything slowed down they were slowing down they were taking a break all that's happening um and then one day I'm, I'm at Casino. Uh, by the way, this is kind of funny. When when this happened, um, when the the fire thing happened, my my wife gets so mad at me. Like I, I my phone was kind of dying, and I had taken a picture. The picture I put up a little bit ago with the the RV in flames. I had texted that to Christy, and then before I could text anything else or call her, my phone died. So I sent her that picture, and then that was it for like hours until I got where I could charge my phone. So I'm still not sure she's forgiven me for that. Um, I'm probably scared you to death. But anyways, um, so so time goes by, you know, I guess a month or so, a couple months, probably more than that, probably a couple months. Um, and I'm talking to our Supero rep on the phone one day. Um, and his name was Brian Gabriel. Uh, he was a fantastic guy. Unfortunately, he is not employed at Supero anymore, I don't believe. Um, I think when they lost a lot of guys through through the shutdowns this year, he, he was 
you know, furloughed or laid off or whatever the, the you know, whatever the right term is, I'm not sure, but um, really, really a bummer because he was, he was an awesome dude and is a fantastic guitar player. Uh, and he and I have become friends, but I'm on the phone with Brian. This is one of the first times he and I, I think really, really chatted. Um, and I was just telling him, man, I, you know, I'm glad we have your guys' amps because I really love them. I, I play them. I, I push them. You know, I sort of, you know, sometimes in a guitar shop, I, I think there's this feeling that people just try to tell you things are good. But I was just letting him know that I, you know, I actually really pushed the Supro stuff on people when they came in because I loved it. Like, I just was always like, hey, you you need to try these amps. I love them. I gig with them. I've toured with them. They're roadworthy. They, they hold up. They sound great. Um, and they're just great amps. So well, he and I are talking about it. I'm telling him I really love my Statesman. Um, and he tells me he plays through a Royal Reverb. And I said, hey, I had one of those and I loved it. And he asked me what happened. Why didn't I have it anymore? So I tell him kind of the story of the fire. Don't think much of it. Um, and he starts telling me about his, how it was modded by the factory at Supro. He asked them to put a mid-control knob. And he was telling me how cool that was, how, how great it sounded, um, and how he wished he could just send that one to me. And I thought, man, oh, that's a great gesture. You know, that's a really kind thought. We kind of laughed about it, and uh, that was it. I didn't think about it again. And then months and months later, uh, well, not months later, I guess maybe another month or two months later, one day a package shows up uh, from Supra with my name on it at the guitar shop, not not to the casino, but to me. Uh, and I guess he had gotten a hold of Baxter, and they had sort of launched a scheme for Supra to actually replace my Royal Reverb. So they they did. They actually sent me a brand new amp. Um, it was different from my first one, but it was, like I said, only two of a kind. So the factory had made one for Brian, who was, who was our rep. And then they made one for me with a mid knob, uh, and with a, a sort of a different, um, gain staging with the rectifier tube. Uh, and it sounds fantastic. I love it. Um, I don't think I'll ever part with it because of the history. And it looks fantastic. The little blue Rhino Tolex they put on there, I think they call it uh, Rhino Hide, is, is fantastic. Everything about it is fantastic. It is small. Um, it is surprisingly heavy. So it is heavy, but it is really it's small and easy to manage. Um, it's, it just sounds good. Um, it's one of the best clean-sounding clean amps I think they make. The reverb's fantastic. Trimlo is fantastic on it, and I still use it a ton. It's probably, it's, it is the loudest amp I have right now. Like I said, it will go to 60 watts, but I always run it on 35, and it is always still too loud. Um, but it takes pedals like a champ. Uh, it's just a great amp, and I am super grateful that they sent that to me. Uh, now, in the fire, we lost all of Pam's camera stuff and all the footage, so we didn't get any any video. We didn't get any photos from that like we, we meant, but or meant to, but we, we, man, what a crazy experience. And like I said, people were so kind to us. Other bands were so kind, even, even people like Sweetwater and pedal companies. And, uh, John had an amp, uh, not given to him, but, but really, he really got hooked up by third power. That's what he lost. And they, they made him a new amp really, really, you know, at a huge discount. Um, so all kinds of Pretty cool things came out of it, and we had some really uh, great benefit shows as a result of it. So, anyways, that is the story of my Supro Royal Reverb. If you guys have any questions about that or any comments, anything else you want to know, please let me know. But that's how I ended up getting a free one. It was super kind of Supro, and I will forever be indebted and loyal to them for, for that reason. So if you haven't played a Supro amp, check them out. The whole line is super cool. The Black Magic is super cool. But if you can get your hands on one of these, it's one of my favorites. The Comet is one of my favorites as well. I, right at the moment, I have a Comet and this. I actually traded the little Comet stack for the Statesman. Um, so, yeah, I've gone through quite a, quite a few of them. Even the little uh, Blues King models are pretty darn cool. So check them out. Uh, let me know what you think about Supro. Let me know if you've got any uh, experience with gear companies doing awesome things. For you or for people you know or for artists that you know. I always think that's really awesome. Uh, hope you guys, again, have a fantastic new year. Uh, let's say goodbye to 2020 and all its craziness. And here's hoping that 2021 is, is a lot, lot better. Uh, if you have not, hit like and subscribe. Click the bell so you don't miss stories in the future. And I will see you guys soon. Have a great day. Thanks.